Hi, now going through some main hardware needed for networks. And we haven't covered networks yet, but we will. So there are some stuff in this video which is just <laughs> sort of covered a little bit before we've, we've talked about it properly. Okay, so that includes um, some stuff on hubs and switches because hubs and switches are both very similar devices and they both connect devices in a LAN. So a LAN is one of the things we haven't covered yet. A LAN is a local area network a relatively small network used in, say, an off uh, using a home or more likely an office. Well, a LAN is in a home, but switches and hubs are likely to be used in offices. You haven't got, I'm sure, a hub or a switch in your home, but at your school you probably do, and in most offices there will be as well. So, these two pictures are actually both of switches, but hubs look the same. Now, the one on top here has got five Ethernet ports, this bottom one has got a lot more. I won't count how many we've got. But the point is you plug in your devices with wires. So usually Ethernet, but it doesn't need to be Ethernet. And what they both do is send messages around the network. So with a hub, messages which are received by the hub are sent to all devices. So you have all your devices plugged in to the hub and its job is to send messages to all of the devices. So you might have quite a big building and you might plug in all of your cables into the hub and it's the job of a hub to then send the message out to every device. So one device is plugged in, it sends a message, it goes to all the other devices plugged in. So all it does is repeat the message to all devices. And the purpose for having a hub in the first place is to connect up your network. You could plug every single wire into every single computer it's more efficient to have a hub as your central device. Now a switch is very similar, except it's got quite, well, quite a key difference actually. A switch will only send messages to the intended recipient. So a hub will send it to everyone, but a switch is much more private and will be more careful about who the message is sent to. So when you send a message on a network, you specify who you want to receive the message. A hub doesn't care, sends it to everyone. A switch does care and only sends it to the correct device. So as you can imagine, a hub is much cheaper because it doesn't do much work. It just replicates the message lots of times, but a switch is more expensive because it can target who to send it to. So a switch is more secure because messages aren't getting sent to anybody. It's just the person who should receive it. Now, one slight thing before we move on, which can get confusing is the word hub is used quite a lot and quite loosely. You often hear companies advertising their brand new super fast hub, and it's not the same hub as this. So often companies like Sky or Virgin or BT advertise hubs when they actually mean routers. So this hub is a very particular type of device, which like I say, just sends messages to every device on the network. Okay, so don't mix up advertising hubs from actual network hubs. Okay, now to go through a few more um, devices which are used. So first of all, a wireless access point, shortened to a WAP or just WAP. So a wireless access point, as the name suggests, provides the wireless connection to a network. It allows you to access the wireless network, in most cases, Wi-Fi. So it'll provide the Wi-Fi signals and allow you to communicate with the rest of the standard wired network. So here is one you plug into like a socket, relatively small. Here is a bigger one. Both have got antennas, but they don't need to have antennas. It could just be kept internal, but it's got to have a way to broadcast those waves so anybody can access. You can't have a wireless network without a wireless access point. Now a router is a very, very important device and is similar on first glance to a switch or a hub. Not so much in appearance, they're usually just sort of a fairly boring looking black box. But what they do is they also will send messages between devices, but really, really importantly, a switch and a hub keep messages inside of a network. A router does not. A router forwards messages between networks. So it sends a message from your network to another network. So its job is to connect up multiple networks. So really, switch and a hub are creating a LAN 
a router creates a WAN, a wide area network. So the way a router works is it will use the IP address, which is just a, a way to locate a device of your packet, a packet being part of your message, to determine where and how to send it. It will decide what is the best route to send your message, because your message might be going to America or China or India or anywhere in the world, the routers have got to decide where is the best way to send it. So they are quite sophisticated. Now your basic Sky One in your home or whatever company it is, is quite simple. It just sends it to Sky or Virgin or the company it's made by. But a proper business router can be a little bit more clever and connect up multiple networks and has to actually make decisions about where to send different packets. Now, and a final one which is maybe less used nowadays, um, a modem is, again, another fairly boring looking black box. But a modem, what it does is convert between digital and analog signals. So digital are in binary, analog is more natural. So digital is for computers, analog is a more naturally occurring signal. Now, in practice, you must have a modem when you want to connect to any analog communication method, of which there are fewer nowadays. But in particular, a modem is to connect to what we call an ADSL line. An ADSL line, we'll look at in a future video, but really we're talking about telephone lines. So if you want to use a telephone network, the old fashioned copper cable ones, you need to have a modem because these use analog data and not digital data. Your computer is digital, the telephone network is analog, and so a modem converts between the two. Now, if you live in a city in particular and have got fast fiber optic internet, you're not using ADSL, and so you won't need a modem. But if you are using ADSL, then you'll need to have a modem to do that conversion. And the final thing to say is, we've gone through five hardware devices, and please just learn what they do, roughly speaking. But what is also important to be aware of is, generally speaking, we have in our homes, not all five devices, clearly, but we have usually just one hybrid device. So a hybrid device, the word hybrid means you're doing multiple things. So a hybrid device is where it combines one or more of these features, one or more of these devices. So for instance, your router in your house might look more like this. So it's a router, it's got also a wireless access point built in, it's got the antennas, we've also got potentially a modem built in, and it might function like a switch or a hub as well. So it combines features, which means it's much more convenient because you don't need to have four or five separate devices in your house. But because it's got all in one, it doesn't do any of them amazingly well, so it's simpler and might not perform as well as a standalone device would. And also because you're combining all of these things together, there's more risk of total failure. Right, if this one device goes down, all of your functionality might go down. Whereas in a business which might have separate devices, if one of them goes down, you can still use your modem. We you can still use the switch or whatever it is. There's more backup in case things go wrong. So hybrid devices are really convenient but are usually not used by businesses because there is performance issues and risk of failure.